I will describe in this video how to uh, play with an SVG file uh, using JavaScript and of course everything loaded from an HTML web page. Um, for starting, the first thing that we did is using Inkscape, we created a very simple, very simple content, very simple, yeah, very simple draw. The say here we have from Square, uh, just a text. Okay, what we're going to do is play with that square and change the the color of the square when when we click on it and and the first thing that we're going to do after loading the SVG file will be change the text that uh, it's loaded by default um, using this tool. Okay, after dragging and dropping the elements for creating that stuff with Inkscape, the next thing that we did is just uh, click the click the right mouse button and go to the object properties. Then we click here and we go to the object properties. We can see the ID and the label of that object. This is super important because especially the ID will be the reference that we're going to use from JavaScript for uh, for getting this object and later playing with the attributes and with the properties of the object. The label, it's uh, not going to be useful for that task, but it's uh, interesting to put that there just for properly uh, localizing or for properly viewing the tree structure which compound, which uh, defines this, S this SVG file. Inkscape is uh, an application. You can run that uh, application on Linux, Windows, or Macintosh, and all those three infrastructures. Um, SVG use um, by default in uh, Inkscape SVG format, or if you want to have uh, a little bit more compatible SVG file, you can use SVG. Uh, SVG format. At the end of the day, both of them are compatible. It's just uh, Inkscape SVG has uh, some meta information about uh, Inkscape configuration page or a configuration canvas uh, that they want to, to share there with special tags and special attributes. But um, of course, it's better to play with SVG plane when you have to publish that. But it's mm, you don't have to worry if you want to play with the other ones. Of course, uh, the idea will be uh, have uh, even more complex uh, designs and, and even more complex uh, animations and, and interactions with the user. But for this example, everything will be super easy and super simple because I want to set the basic concepts about how to play with SPC files and JavaScript. Okay, this is the SVG file. We are going to save that SVG file in that directory. As you can see, we have uh, just three files. The SVG file that we already created. We can take a look on the format of that file. Mm, you can see the SVG file, it's plain XML file. Uh, here we can see the MySquare and the definition of the MySquare. Okay, uh, the first thing that we have to do is, uh, is load that SVG file from an HTML page. This is the very basic and simple content that you can put in the HTML page just for loading. As you can see, what is it? Just for loading the Synoptic with this file, simple.svg. This is just an ID that we're going to use for getting the DOM of that SVG. And later, what is the J JavaScript code that we're going to use for for playing with, playing around with that uh, SVG file. 
And here in the body, we call them the function main, which is going to be a function available in SimpleJS. Um, very good. This is all. This is the HTML structure. If we jump just for a second before going too deep with the JavaScript, just to show what is going to be the final result. Here's the web page loaded. In the bottom part, we have the inspection tools and debugging tools for HTML for web page developers. And then just going here, we can click. And then, uh, as you can see, the square changes the color from green to, to red. If I click, the square changes again to, to green. And infinitely, it's going to change everything. Then the hello wall is just the my text that we already defined in the SVG file. If I go for a second to the JavaScript, I can just go in everything, and we can see what is the that. Or I can do something better, no? Maybe I just can do something like that. I will say, don't call the JavaScript file. Just load the SVG file. Good. Just give me, oh, I have to, to load the HTTP server, which is just a very simple HTTP server. Let me reload the page. And here it is exactly the content that we had with Inkscape. Okay, now let's load it from Chrome. This is exactly what that HTML page does. If we go to load that JavaScript that we created, uh, thanks to that, we change that text to, to the Hello World text. And we assign that behavior to the to the square. Let me reload that. Now the text changes automatically. Then this is the behavior. Okay, how does it work? Very easy. Here it is the function main that I already said previously, and it calls two things. The first thing is my text, which is going to be read in, a se in some seconds, and my square. My text is extra simple function. As you can see, just uh, three lanes or two lanes. And the first thing is, is get the SVG DOM, which is another function, which only returns the elements, synoptic, and their content, and its content, sorry. And once we get uh, the element my text, remember, if we go back to Inkscape, my text, is this object, okay? And if we go to the, the HTML structure, sorry, the SVG structure, we can see it is the object, and that object uh, has a shield. Let me see if I can. Well, here it is. The element which has the name my text, here it is the ID my text. Okay, but really, the text is set in a shield of this uh, tag, which is called tspan. Okay, uh, tspan has an ID, which is a little bit more difficult to localize because it's not defined or it's not possible to change that ID from Inkscape. Uh, because of that, we get the element, and later we use the, the property first element child for getting that tspan element, and later with the property inner HTML, we modify the value of that that text. Remember, by default, it's something like this is the text, and we change that to hello world. Okay, um, we have the first part of the story. Here is how this text is changed automatically when the SVG file is loaded. The second thing that we do is called a function my square. It's a little bit more fun, uh, fun, fun. That function, the, um, what it does, it's, um, first of all, 
get the, the element my square, which is the square by itself, and we put that reference to a variable called ms. Then here what we do is uh, we assign some business logic uh, or some, let's say, assign some behaviors to, to the events that uh, this um, element is going to arise. Let me start from the end. What we have here is two, two events, uh, the event on mouse over and the event on mouse out. This is because when I move through the square, you can see how the cursor changes from a pointer to a hand with a, with a finger. Uh, okay, this effect is, is thanks to that. It is event on mouse over, and we change the style of the cursor to a pointer, and, and on mouse out, we change the style of the cursor to auto. Okay, this other part of the code, the only thing that it does is just uh, assign some behavior to on click. Okay, here is a little bit of fun. The first thing is we have uh, to localize to, to get, okay, first thing, okay, okay, let me see. We have the element ms, we already localized the element, and then thanks to that, we can get the attribute style. The next thing that we do is remove the spaces of the value of, of the of style and split the elements uh, that we have in that list, in, in, in that value. The next thing that we do is iterate those elements. Sorry, it's, this is, yeah. Um, yes, this is that. Uh, iterate those elements, and then per element we split the, the element in two parts. The first part will be the key, and the second part will be the value. This is on the uh, control for avoiding parsing empty, I mean, non-key value structures inside the, the values of the style. Um, it seems very complicated, but it isn't. It's just basic basic code. Let me show you how it works that in a while. Uh, okay, the idea is we will parse that, and when we get the fill property, which has the, the color, of that element, uh, we change if the value is, is, is green, we change that to red, and if the value is not green, we change that to green. Okay, this is a toggle. Uh, once we have this value, we recreate the string of the style. Okay, uh, with the change of the field and maintaining the rest of the fields with the same value. So it's a little bit more difficult to explain than to do this. Uh, once we have that, we change the attribute style with a new value. Okay, uh, so no, no mystery. Just going to this part, what we are doing is just changing that. Okay, we have an attribute called style. So if we go to the source code, we're going to see the attribute style, here it is, okay? It has, as a value, that string, which is fill RGB, blah, 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 stroke width, blah, 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 cursor auto, okay? What we are doing, if, if we click here, we can see this is a split of this. When it's split, it, this is the element that compound this string. And what we are doing here is just split those elements, and recreate that string with uh, just changing the, the field attribute, which is this one. Okay, nothing else. If I click here, we can see what we do. It just changed that that field for the new value. Nothing else. Mm, very good. Here we change the value, as we said. And later, what we do, as, as you can see, when we change the background color, the next thing that we do is, is hide hide that text, no? When it's in, in red, the text disappears. This is thanks to that. We get 
my text and we change the, we get the attribute display. And then if the state is known, we change the state to block. And if it's not known, we change to known. So this is toggle for changing the state of display. And later what we do is change display to known or display to block, depending on what it was the previous value. So all the business logic that we apply when we click on the square is that it is carried with this part. As I said, uh, it's more difficult to explain than to do. I hope it was useful. Um, my idea is just allow um, HTML programmers to understand how to play with SVG files and to um, it's just an introductory video, but I think it could be very useful for some people.